Hey guys, welcome back to Me and My Maverick. Um, it's been a while. So I um, was on a, a long trip, gone for almost three weeks, that I talked about in some previous videos. And then got back from that trip and ended up working full time for almost a month. Um, that's a lot of hours for a retired guy, but um, we're back to a normal schedule now. So I wanted to get this video together and talk to you about driving um, to Florida and back and sort of my thoughts on, you, you know, how the Maverick did during that trip and some of the pros and cons and likes and dislikes and all that. So um, quickly in front of you is the route that we took. So leaving from uh, Lafayette, Indiana, um, we ended up our first real stop. I'm not talking about staying overnight in Chattanooga, but our first real stop was Tarpon Springs. Had some friends that were there for the winter and stopped in to see them. And then from there, went to Cocoa Beach and stayed for a couple days, then left Port Canaveral on a, what was called a five-day cruise. It was really only four days um, at sea, but a five-day cruise. Um, from Cocoa Beach, then went to Orlando, to Disney World, stayed there a week, then drove to Pigeon Forge for a couple days, and then um, from Pigeon Forge, we can drive home in about a half a day, so... Uh, yeah, I ended up with almost 2,700 miles, and during that time, um, averaged almost 30 miles a gallon. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the video. So I do have some sort of random video through here, and I'll talk over top of that so you guys don't have to look at me. But um, on our first stop to stay overnight in Chattanooga, um, didn't realize there was a Bass Pro Shops right across the street from where we were staying. So uh, that provided a little bit of entertainment for me to, to go check that out. But um, as you can see, the truck was a little dirty. We, we left in a lot of rain from Indiana. And um, then by the time we got to where we were going to Florida, it didn't rain the whole time we were there. So it's sort of interesting, the, the change in the, the weather. So um, this part here, we're driving into Port Canaveral. And I'll swing the camera over the left here in a second. And you'll see the, the port. Uh, there weren't a lot of cruise ships there on the day we came in. But um, there were several the day that we actually went out to sea. So, you know, what are some of the things I liked about the Maverick while we were driving? Um, you know, it's a it's a small truck, but it never felt small. Um, it was just two of us, me and my wife, and then, of course, all of our luggage and everything else. And we had plenty of room. So we, we had put the luggage in the bed because it is covered. And, you know, we had food. We had... Uh, shoes and jackets and all kinds of stuff. We just never knew what, for sure, what the weather is going to be like. And so we had packed quite a bit of stuff. And so it was plenty big for us. Um, this video is from the cruise ship. We, we sailed on the Disney Wish. And I believe this was the second morning. And um, as you can tell, it had, had a pretty nice sunrise that morning. So I was up on deck um, drinking my Diet Coke and watching the sun come up. But, um, yeah, so, you know, handling, driving, it, di it did great. I, I have no problems with how it drove or anything like that. Um, you know, we did, did great on gas mileage, like I said. There were times where I was averaging over 31 miles a gallon. And um, I'll show you a sh short clip about that here a little bit later on. But, um, you know, speed-wise, it, it did great. I typically drive about five mile an hour over on the interstate and then when you get into metro areas um usually do no more than five to ten miles an hour over but um you know it did great whenever i needed more speed it was there of course with the eco boost engine and um just can't complain about any of that you know one of the other things sometimes gets overlooked is braking and the maverick stops really well um, i'm impressed with how well it breaks up quickly it can break and how smooth the process all is you know everything is just steering braking all that's really smooth and um couldn't be more pleased with it so what you're seeing now is um the next to the last night on the ship they have what's called a pirate night and then they do fireworks so you guys will see the the fireworks here which is pretty impressive coming off of a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean but um back to the pros you know just just overall was very pleased with how well it done. Obviously, at 30 miles a gallon, almost 30, um, you know, you spend a lot less on gas than you do with something like our Explorer that gets about 23 miles a gallon on the highway. 
So pretty pleased with that. Now, along with the pros, there were some cons. So let's talk about some of the things that sort of got shaken out during this trip. Um, one of the really strange things that happened was the climate control system seemed to lose its mind a couple of times during the trip. So what I mean by that is, you know, we would set the temperature, set had the fan speed on, and you could use automatic or, you know, manually adjust the temperature. And the climate control would just sort of just do its own thing. Um, the most annoying part was the fan speed would go from what we would normally have as a one or two on the fan speed, and it would go to four. And there was no indication that it changed. It's just all of a sudden you notice the air was blowing, you know, really fast. And along with that, um, you know, the temperature we might have to be set to 70 degrees, and you could all of a sudden tell that the temperature was like the minimum temperature. And you could change the thermostat, and at one point we had it all the way up to 80, and it was barely tolerable in the truck, and I had to turn, turn the entire system off a couple times. Um, and then, for whatever reason, you turn it back on, and it, it um, would go back to normal. So, not quite sure if that is an air conditioning problem, if that's a climate control problem, exactly what that is, but uh, obviously needs to be looked at. So then the other issue, and I've, I've had similar issues with the truck um, since I got it last October, is, you know, the touch screen for your CarPlay system, um, you know, that has your radio and all that stuff. Um, several times it would just stop. It would do nothing. And, of course, we're using the GPS through there, and you would have no GPS. You would have um, nothing. And the radio would continue, to, or the I play on flash drive. It, it would continue to play those songs, but you had no control over anything. So that was really annoying. We did find out that if you push in the on off button and then press the fast forward button on the dash and hold it about five seconds, it does a complete reset on that system. So had to do that a couple of times um, to get it back. And um, so your other option is, you know, you stop the truck and start the truck and it um, resets then too. So that was um, a very much an inconvenience, especially with regards to the GPS, um, because if you were coming up on, you know, some kind of change in your course, um, you'd have to unplug the phone so you could see what it was telling you um, on the phone versus on the display. So um, I think both of those things are probably climate control and touchscreen are probably just software issues, and um, we'll have to get that in and have it looked at. Um, a couple other things that happened was, and notice that we had um, quite a bit of brake noise, especially when we got to a point where we had been driving in town a lot, which is really strange that I've never had it happen at home, but it happened in Florida. Now, the temperatures were also significantly higher. Every day it was in the 70s or 80s while we were gone. And um, I'm sure that has something to do with it, but that will need to be uh, looked at as well. And then... Um, I do have what I think is a strut noise from the driver's side uh, right front strut, and that'll be need to need to be looked at as well. Um, tend to notice it when you know, you're traveling at speed, and then you hit just the right kind of dip in the road, and you'll hear this pop, and it does seem to be coming from the strut. So, starting to build my list of things to take in for its first service call, and um, that'll be that'll be coming up soon, and then. The other thing that's a little bit disturbing, but as I got thinking about it, is, is probably not that big of a deal. But I noticed when I got home that there was a small amount of transmission fluid on the top of the transmission case. Now, why I first saw it, it was like, okay, what is going on? But then as I looked at it some more, I thought about this. So the filler cap and the filler neck um, is located on top of the case as well, the transmission case. My suspicion is either... Um, the cap is not seated correctly or needs a new O-ring or potentially it got hot and blew that transmission through um, that, that part of it. Because when you look at um, where the transmission fluid is, um, it, it had to came from there. It couldn't have come from somewhere else. There's just nowhere else it could have came from. So anyway, those are things that um, I'm going to need to get it in for. Um, here in this video, this part of the video, you can see 31.2 miles a gallon. And I was driving. I didn't realize I was even driving that fast. I was driving 77 at that point. Um, probably trying to get into Atlanta and get out of Atlanta as soon as we could. Um, south of Metro Atlanta to getting north of 
basically room Georgia. Um, should normally take around an hour or so for the mileage we're talking about. Took us three hours to get through there. And uh, that was frustrating uh, because you know we we had plans to go uh, out to eat someplace in the Smoky Mountains and had to change our plans. So um, as we finish up here with some of the video, and this is uh, Cades Cove in the Smoky Mountains. Um, yeah, so the next step is I'll, I'll get it into the shop here soon and, and let them look at all these things. And then probably do a video about that. I'll give you guys a breakdown of what they found and, and all those kind of things. Um, this is a place called the Sinks in the Smokies. If you look real close, you can tell it was raining pretty hard. Uh, pretty much rained all day while we were, were there on the day we went into the park. But um, still fun to do. You know, I love going to Smoky Mountains and, and um, this is a pretty neat place to go to. So, sort of wrapping up here, uh, you guys again can see the, the mileage. So, the mileage in the phases was to Tarpon Springs, then from Orlando to Pigeon Forge, and then from Pigeon Forge to home. So, that was the, the three phases. And uh, pretty consistent. You know, that second phase had uh, a little, little bit better mileage, but again, that was in northern Florida. Probably had a little wind behind us and, and got a little bit better mileage. So... Yeah, so stay tuned. Hopefully have more videos coming up quickly. And uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching these videos. And um, like I said, we'll try to get back onto a normal cycle here of, of videos and um, give you guys something to, to look at and to entertainment. So again, thanks for watching.